Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Prestige by Kingdoms of the Earth Games. This is a one to four player game that takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Prestige, you are attempting to build cooperatively the great city. You're gonna be one or many of the great tribes vying for control and favor around the tribal center, creating and expanding upon the tribe. There are different tribes you could be, whether it be the fishing tribe or merchant tribe or uh, any of the other six different tribes you can choose and utilize throughout the game, but you're going to be utilizing not only those, but all the rest of them as well. You'll have a hand of cards that you're going to utilize, dropping down cards either to the left or right of the tribal center, and in some cases, the top and bottom of cards as well. Score action values, as well as actions that you can take in the game, currency, and of course, your popularity, your happiness, and your town's defense. Eventually, there's gonna be many different victory conditions and loss conditions, and when you trigger one of those, you will check to see what happens. If a loss happens, everybody's out. But if you succeed in making it to the end of the victory point tracker, for instance, you'll tally up your tribe's favor. And if you have more victory points than anybody else, or favor points in this case, you will win the game of prestige. Let's show you how to play the game by setting it up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin set up for the game Prestige, the first thing you determine is how many players are playing the game. And in this case, I am playing a two-player game, so I'll explain the two-player game setup. First thing you do is you take the main game board and unfold it and place it within reach of all players. Take the green markers and place them on the four spot or the circular spot for each of the four different trackers. The victory points, happiness, popularity, and town defense. From there, you're gonna have a coffer and it will tell you to place five coins right in the middle of that center square. Then each player is going to get a number of these tribes here. When you're playing two players, you're gonna give each player two. And when you're playing a three or four player game, give each player one. Give each player a quick guide uh, uh, action card as well as a game icons action card and place them face up within that player so they can go ahead and look at those cards throughout the game. After that, you're gonna be making the decks. There are a ton of extra cards in this game and you're never gonna use the entire set when playing a game no matter how many players, but in a two player game, you're going to deal out a number of these cards here, the positive favor and negative favor. And in a two player game, you're going to need eight of both of the favor cards, whether it's gaining or losing, those are the hand symbols. And then you're going to need 10 of the invader cards. Shuffle the cards up, make the decks and discard the rest away from the game, you won't need them. Then you're going to make a tribe deck. And each tribe deck is going to consist of eight of each of the tribe cards, so, eight fishing and eight merchants, et cetera, et cetera, as well as 10 community ones. The community ones are the white symbols. Once you've shuffled all those cards up, you're then going to make three different stacks. Two of them will be face down and one will be face up. So when you pick the cards, you can either take them from the left or right hand side or the middle. When drawing cards, the uh, icon in the middle of the card is going to determine what tribe it is for, whereas if you pick it up from the middle, you'll not only get the tribe, but also what the card is. Once every player has four cards drawn from any of these stacks here, as well as everything set up here and the tribal center in the middle of the game board, set aside all the rest of the cards. You won't be utilizing those. You're only gonna need cards in hand, your tribes, the deck set up, and the main game set up along with the tribal center. Okay, that's how you set it up. Let's talk about how to play. Playing the game Prestige is as simple as setting it up. The first thing you'll do is choose a player that have their four cards in hand, and they're going to take a look at their quick play guide. The quick play guide is going to have steps in order that you will take, and then once you've finished all those steps, you will pass to your left, and the next player will take all of those steps up until the point where the game ends, triggering one of the many victory or loss conditions of the game. The first thing you will do on your turn is you will check to see if the city tracker board has any of the markers on any space that has an event or a resource uh, icon. Then you will do the following. It could be gaining a happiness or a town defense, losing or gaining a favor or losing a unit, and so on and so forth. Even as far as hitting that 15 victory points to end the game and score up your tribe's favor. Once you've determined which ones of these that you have stepped on, then you're going to activate them and you'll choose the order in which you activate them. If you're drawing a positive favor, you'll draw one of these hand cards, reveal it and do what it says. Some of them will be in play and others will just remain there or have an instant effect. Others will remain in play for the round. Sometimes losing a favor will give you uh, most of the time negative effects to the game, whether it be the cards or cards in hand um, or your tracker itself. And after you have done all those things, you'll move on to taking an action. You may take one action, but you can take any of the following. The first one is that you can play a card. You'll take a card from your hand and you will play it to the left or right of any card on the field. 
Sometimes a card will have an up arrow or a down arrow, in which case you can place that card above or below another card, thusly creating a grid of cards as you place down the cards to form your city. When you look at a card, there are a variety of things that you must uh, pay attention to. We'll go through them now. The first portion is in the middle top is going to be the name of the card. The top left is the type of guild that it is associated with. And in this case, it's a white one, so it's a neutral. Right underneath the guild is going to be a resource cost or a city cost. So it might say you have to have the happiness tracker at eight and three gold to play this card. On the right hand side is the types uh, that the card is. It could be a capital building. It could be a building that can go on top of other buildings. Um, and it might be a house, etc., etc. Uh, down below on the bottom left hand side is going to be circular icons. And these icons will allow you to either gain gold or move up on the resource tracks on the town center board. There are also white highlighted areas near the top, bottom, left or right of the card. And these are going to activate only when you place the card. Not when a card is placed on it, but when you place a card down, you'll activate whatever symbols are touching another card, provided that it meets the requirements. This will say that you need to have a wall to the left of this card when playing it, and it will give your town minus one defense. Whereas if you place this on top of a wall, you'll get plus one town defense. There are also some unique cards that will give you actions that you can use on your turn. So as opposed to just using one of the actions I'm, I'm highlighting here, you can actually use one of the card actions from a card that somebody previously has, been, has played. Once you place the card down, pay the costs and make sure that it basically uh, aligns with whatever card you wanna place it on. Try and make sure you get a benefit because otherwise you can play a card, spend resources and gain nothing for it. Then you're done. However, maybe you don't want to play a card. Instead, you can discard a card or cards. You can take any number of cards from your hand and discard those cards. When you do, you're going to be able to drop to your hand of four. But as a negative, you're going to have to draw an invader card and resolve the effects of the invader. The last action that you can take is restoring a building. In some cases, when you play down locations, there's going to be events or triggered effects that will make you flip the card face down. That illustrates that the building has been destroyed and the only way to bring it back is by restoring it. In which case, this is one action that you can discard a card from your hand to flip the card over and restore the building to its rightful place and its front right side, which will give you hopefully benefits when you do so. After your turn has ended, you're going to basically draw back up to five cards. You will draw up until you have all the cards that you need, and then you will pass. And the next player will get a chance to go. Checking the board, checking to see if there are any events that take place, resolving those events, and then doing one of the actions. Discarding cards to draw new cards and suffering an invader, playing a card face up on the field, paying the costs and gaining the benefits, or simply restoring a building by discarding a card from their hand and then drawing back to five cards and the game will progress from there. A few notes, one is that your coffers is basically your coins, and it is a communal place where you can utilize anybody's coins. So whenever you gain coins or spend coins, it all comes from the same location. Additionally, this grid here is gonna start with the tribal center. The tribal center has three unique types of, um, basically types of, uh, types of types. So you can look at your game icons to illustrate the different types, which is standard city icons. Home, work, spiritual, monument, road, public, wall, and market. Those are all the different types of locations that you can place down. Always note those when you're placing cards down because they will give you benefits and negatives when doing so. And also make sure that you follow the rules of the cards. You can't just place a card on top of another card on the bottom of another card unless that card speci specifies on the top right hand side of the card. And you can actually look and see, ah, the tower has two up arrows and two up arrows on my game icons says that I can place above an already placed card. And there you go, that's the game. Basically, you'll go back and forth taking turns until the game triggers an ending. And there are a variety of ways this can happen. When you go to draw your last invader card and there are none, the game ends and everyone loses. If you run out of favors and you go to draw a new one, the game ends and you also lose. If you finish all the positive favors and you go to draw another one, the game will end and you can win that game. And if you get to the victory point condition of 15, the game will end and you'll have an opportunity to win as well. The only other way that the game is going to end is if you run out of cards from these three decks here, as well as your hand, in which case you're going to lose. In any case, whenever you lose the game, everyone loses and you don't check to see who wins. 
whenever a game win triggers, you'll actually check to see who specifically wins by looking at all of the different tribes on the table, all the different cards, and checking to see which cards are your type. For each one, you're going to score one or two points if it's a leader card, and if you have the most points, you're the winner of the game, Prestige. Prestige is a semi-cooperative city building tableau management game. Now, in this game, the city building will take place in one area, and everyone will build the city together. Additionally, no one wants the game to end in a loss, because if that happens, all players will lose. And so everybody wants the game to win. Now, the problem is, if you are not high enough in guild points or tribe points, you're going to want to strive to gain more points before the game ends. So there's this tug of war of sorts going left and right of game ending to a loss or to a win, up until the point where hopefully somebody can net the end of the game and secure the victory. You don't obviously want to push the marker all the way to 15 victory points if you only have four cards out while your opponent has six, because that would end in you losing the game even though the overall is a win. So there is this kind of push-pull that happens throughout the game and that's really quite enjoyable. The game is only as difficult as players make it, and of course players will make things as difficult as possible to ensure their victory, which can then result in nobody winning the game. Cards coming out provide benefits and potentially new actions, as well as passive abilities that while the card is face up will give you unique effects. Like for instance, I have this uh, Netweaver shop, and it says that for every coin, uh, I get one coin for every card that is both a work and a water in the city when this card is played. So when I drop this card down, I'll just simply be getting a bunch of coins for the water and work cards that have those symbols on the cards when it's played. Other cards will say that every time you play a market card, as long as it's on the field, you'll gain a coin or a happiness or even a population. There are other various cards as well that will say that when you play them, you can search the discard pile for a specific card and put it into your hand or search the deck for one. Uh, something that might say like a specific unit, for instance, and unit cards have a little banner in the top left-hand corner, and they'll read something along the lines of the brazen, minus two popularity when you play it. However, destroy a card of your choice when this card is played. And so you can actually choose to foil other players and other players' cards when playing cards of your own. However, it does cost the city, and costing the city when working semi-cooperatively to not make the city go down in ruin is kind of this really tight gaming aspect. I love that this game can be kind of a, like a, a light game where you're just playing cards down, making a city, and at the end you can just see who wins, and it can be kind of this easy going thing. Or when playing with more cut third advanced players, you can start to push this game to its limits, determining how far do you want to get it before the victory condition needs to be close enough to, to not lose the game, but also not close enough to end the game too early, in which you will lose based on your tribe points. And determining what cards need to be on the field and where and how you want to score these points, all of this kind of makes a difference. Additionally, too, there are a ton of cards in this game, and each game you play will be a little bit different with the different cards available to you. As you can see, um, there are unique cards here, like this is the Merchant Tribe, this is the blue one here, and these are all the cards I'm not playing with, with just from this one tribe of the six. Seven, technically, if you include the unique one, the um, overall, like, everybody's type of tribe. And so this game is going to be ever-changing each time, each and every time you play the game. And there are a ton of unique cards, not just in the different tribes, but also from the Favors and Invaders. Uh, some invaders could involve things like remove all the coins from all the coffers unless there's a wall card on the edge of a city. Or opposing faiths. You can lose happiness and defense equal to half your victory points. Reduce these numbers by one for each of the different spiritual areas in play in your city. If defense is less than six, all cards cost twice as much money to play until the next invader card is drawn, and so on and so forth. These things are things you want to avoid, but at some points, you're only going to have cards in your hand that benefit your opponents and not yourself, so it might be worth it to have a little invader come in order to gain the cards that you need to play down for your specific tribe. Then we have favor cards. These are the cards that have the handout with a little heart, and these can be as useful as choosing one destroyed card and flip it back to be restored and increase your population by one, or something like the different home merchants and uh, um, walls also count as spiritual locations for this turn, which can benefit you in playing down other cards that need to be played on spiritual locations. All cards cost one less money unless a new favor card is drawn. So this can kind of stay in play and make everything cheaper for everybody. Gain of money for the number of spiritual cards in your city. Some will have a max and some won't. 
And then the not so favorable cards can be things like reducing your population to the number equal to the number of a specific type, like a home card currently in the city. If population is already equal to or less than the number of home cards, you'll ignore this card. And so each of these are kind of like little events that will take place throughout the game. And as you move up your trackers based on the cards that you play, you'll eventually come across these different events. One might remove units from the field, thusly helping you or hindering you, depending on if you have your units there. Two things like gaining favor cards. If you have multiple markers on multiple events, you will actually draw more than one card. Two of the icons are on favors, you'll draw two favor cards, which is a way to end the game as well. And of course, drawing the not so favorable cards, gaining the defense to move the markers up, as well as losing happiness. When you have too much population, people aren't so happy. So there's a thematic element to this city board. Trying to all the while push your victory points to 15 to end the game and hopefully have the most tribe points at the end of it. Overall, the unique aspect of the tribes using your opponent's cards to benefit the city to an extent, but not too much to where you're helping them win the game, is kind of this push and pull. Like I said, that's what this whole type of game is. Um, being able to select cards where you can look at one of the cards, so that one of the decks is completely face up, where the other ones are face down, but you get to see what type of tribe it is. Sometimes the card is face up, it's not really for you, but it's so useful and it can stop you guys from losing the game that you might just have to do it. Nobody really wants the game to completely end in a loss, so having to select that card to save you all will be helpful, and maybe somebody will help you along in the game. A little bit of politicking can be ensured in this game when playing to a certain degree. Uh, the board itself here is going to start getting wider. Obviously, what you can see here is just four cards down, but real realistically, this is going to be a huge grid of cards. You'll be playing cards on top of other cards, and on bottom of cards are a ton of cards that actually can go up and down. And once you have met the specific uh, row, you'll be able to place on left and right. So it's only a matter of being able to place from top to bottom with these new cards that you can start creating a large grid, which then will allow you to place cards and get bonuses from the top, bottom, left, and even right-hand side in certain locations to score you even more benefits. This is a city building tableau management game at its core with a unique semi-cooperative aspect but the competitiveness is still there. And the fact that it kind of lets you play the game that you want to play is really, really great. Love the artwork. I think the artwork is very abstract and beautiful and works well when putting the city together. Each of the different locations is unique and feels unique. And each of the guilds or the tribes have their own unique locations, markers, and benefits that will help you throughout the game. Overall, Prestige is a very fun game. It's a very enjoyable game and it's a very quick and simple game and easy to understand. I guess the only real negatives to this game are A, the cards are a bit more complex to read and organizing with your opponents while still being your allies can be a little bit of a challenge. If you don't like games that can be cutthroat and you have friends who are going to be cutthroat in this game, this is not one of those games that you can get away with playing casually unless you all choose to play that way. Most likely though, players will be destroying your cards, placing things in locations you don't want them to go on, drawing your cards and then discarding them so that you cannot play them, and so on and so forth. I really like Prestige. This is a really cool game. It's very different, very... I feel like it's a game I've played before, but it's a game I've never played before. And that is a wonderful feeling. I've wanted to jump back into the game and play multiple times. And because there are so many unique cards, I haven't seen a, the same card more than once throughout a game. Overall, a solid experience. I like Prestige, and I hope you'll take a look at it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Prestige by Kingdoms of the Earth. If you're interested in picking the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and back this game if you're interested. And of course, if you'd like to see our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we'll play games just like this one there on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and X. And you can see us play almost every Sunday. I mean, we missed a Sunday or so. We had a little baby come out. So it's been a little bit of a challenge, which is why I'm streaming at night now. But overall, good time. And I hope you guys will join us for that good time as well. And that's pretty much all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to building a, a city and gaining my tribe more prestige than yours next time.